In this lesson, we're going to look at transforming our navigation bar into something that looks more like a navigation bar. So we've already set the main container area, we've brought it over so it's floating left and it's taking up 60% of the available space. So let's update this unordered list within the nav bar. So we'll select nav bar and we're just going to select the unordered list and apply properties to there and we're also going to do nav bar and we're going to do our list items that are there and apply some properties there to transform out these uh, these different elements so typically with navigation bars you don't have them listed out here as uh, horizontally they're more uh, they're not vertically listed but they are horizontally listed so we can take care of this with uh, the display property and we're going to just inline block and as soon as we go inline you see it already transforms and it already comes into line uh, so this gives us the ability to line these up as inlines and we can add in some margins as well around the different elements so if we want something some spacing at the top we can add in five picks and or if we want spacing to the left and to the right, we can add that five picks in that way. So spacing on the left, spacing on the right of five picks. Uh, the other thing uh, with the navigation bars, usually when you're hovering over them, uh, you see the colors changing and maybe you've got some block of color surrounding it. So this we can take care of as well. So within the nav bar, we can see, select all of the hyperlinks and we can add in some properties here. And I'm just going to create some additional spacing down here. So we're not sitting right here at the bottom. So every time I save it, it's, uh, it's actually moving it down. So, uh, so that's why I just added that quick spacing in there. Uh, so this is where we can do use display and display as block. So this allows us to take that entire available block of space. Uh, we also want to get rid of the text decoration entirely. So text decoration and we want to make sure it's got none but also when we hover over it we're going to get rid of it. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to do that as well. And we're going to also add in a color to it. We can do a background color as well. Uh, so maybe for this one, we can do a light color and we can do background color of black so that we can see that. Uh, so there is going to be a difference between adding our background colors there and background colors there. Uh, although whenever we're looking at this, we don't immediately see a difference. But when we apply that hovering over, we are going to see a bigger difference between uh, when we're adding it um, within there or within the list item. Uh, so sometimes you do see it added in with the list item. I usually like to add it in on the last element from the parent. I'm also going to add in some padding here, so I'm thinking probably about four picks of padding uh, so that they look more like clickable, clickable boxes. And this is where that pseudo element comes in, the magic of whenever we hover over, we can add in a hover style into it. So let's go ahead and add that, and this is where I want to update the background color. So usually I like to do a complete contrast so I even go with a black color and then do a background do a lighter background so let's do something like red so it really just pops out right now whenever I hover over it and maybe even a little bit more padding uh, and so this is uh, the the spacing here is being created by the margin so if you want it, if you don't like that much spacing between the boxes, you can always reduce that, or you could reduce it all the way to zero, so you could reduce the spacing completely. And there is actually some default spacing sitting within the list items as well, so we're going to take care of that. 
And so in the unordered list, we already have some default spacing. Uh, so we see when we do inline it that we lose the list style. Uh, so the list style is that uh, disk that we saw. So we want to change this to none. Uh, so just to show you the difference here, whenever we get this inline block, we see that we get these squares there. So we want to ultimately get rid of that again, just to show you that whenever we do none, that that actually disappears. So let's update this back to none. So that disappears just to ensure that we make sure we don't have anything there. And with unordered lists, we do have default uh, spacing there. So we've got to get rid of padding to zero and margin to zero, just to make sure that we don't have any defaults that are lagging there and there might be causing some issues there. So now if I was to change this one down to zero, we see that it's aligning there to the left hand side. So it's aligning a little bit better, but I do like to have a little bit of spacing between the buttons. So maybe we'll even keep it at two. And one last one that we should take care of as well, one other pseudo element that we should take care of, and this is whenever the site is, so we've got hover, but we also wanna have one where it's active, because we wanna be able to identify whatever the active ones are. Uh, so we can either do it this way where we can comma separate it and add the active ones that way. So maybe that's easier right now. Uh, so we can add in a class here and call it active so that we know that we're always on our home page. Uh, so let's refresh that. And actually this should be a active because it's not a pseudo. Uh, so that way that one is active and whenever we hover over them uh, they turn active. Uh, so this means that we can click on those. So in the next lesson we're going to continue to build out our website and really update the look and feel of our content area. So it's coming up in the next section.